Okay. Uh, hi and welcome everybody. Uh, thank you all so much for joining. Today we have Chris Hargurney, the founder of Liberate Science and Research Equals. He's also a Mozilla Open Science Fellow and a Shuttleworth Fellow and uh, with over a decade of experience in open science um, practices. So um, Chris, after his PhD in statistics, he became one of the strongest proponents, I may I say, activists in open science field, advocating for a radical change in the research practices and for more equitable and sustainable research. So we're really, really happy to have you here, Chris, and we're very eager to learn about how research equals will transform the way we think about research output and the ways we share that. So thank you so much and please go ahead. I hand it over to you. Thank you, Sarah. And also I'm very honored to speak to this group who only, you know, you, you've been convening for around a month, I think. So I'm very happy to be one of the inaugural keynote speakers um, for your group. And I'm happy to see a few familiar names, a few new names. Uh, so it's also always nice to, you know, learn also from you. So please do feel free and feel invited to put stuff in the chat or um, raise your hand during the conversation. I will requ request a bit of assistance on the raise hand while I share my screen because sometimes Zoom doesn't make it as clear. And before I, I start, um, I also, you know, uh, it's, it's been a very busy day probably for, for most of the people in the world uh, mentally. So if you need a moment to just uh, walk out, please do. Uh, there's stuff happening all the time. So I won't be offended if you, if you're like uh, looking with a side eye to a news channel or whatever. Uh, so please do feel uh, comfortable doing that. So as Sarah already said, I have a, around a decade of experience in open science and I have a ton of stories uh, in that sense that have motivated me to, to, to start Liberate Science, to ultimately leave academia, but stay a researcher and to start this uh, open access publishing platform called Research Equals. Um, there's a limited amount of time today, but you know, I, I'm online quite a lot, so feel free to ask me if, uh, if any questions come up. Uh, but I'll just dig right in. Um, so today I'll be chatting a bit about uh, Research Equals, and primarily I'll talk a bit about the idea behind it. Uh, as I said, there's a long lead up to this, uh, which I can't cover completely, but I'll talk a bit about the idea and um, give you a small demo of this new open access, open access publishing platform. And this is really built with researchers in mind. As I said, I'm a researcher. A lot of the features that we bring are born from my own frustrations of trying to improve my own work. And also as a reminder, everything I show you, you can use right now. So this is in the pipe dream. Everything you see is real. Uh, so with that, the idea behind the platform is that research goes through a lot of steps and winding paths, which usually end up in a research paper. If you do research, you probably know how nonlinear this works and how much information doesn't go into those papers. And especially that when those papers are published, they don't show those, uh, those paths. Yes, here we go. So when we read a paper, uh, we were left wondering uh, whether the story that we read actually reflects reality. And we see that very often when people try to reproduce things or uh, replicate things or try to find all the information they need just to understand what actually happened, that that isn't sufficient in a paper. There are, of course, cases where that is the, the case, but um, yeah, most of the time, there are open questions. And Research Equals really focuses not on the paper per se, but on the research journey and documenting each of the steps as you go along this process. So the first step in a research process is a publication. The second step uh, is also a publication and it links back to the original one. And we can keep doing this to sort of by the end of the research journey have a path of the research steps so that when we see the final results, so to speak, we can trace it back and see where it comes from. 
And that also helps people to verify and ultimately build trust in the outcomes. And on research equals, I think the next slide uh, was created by Walt Culture. They reported on this and they summarized it very, very aptly. Um, you know, in the traditional academic publishing world, you do your work and at the very end, you make it, uh, you make it available and uh, you, you get charged if you want to publish open access. And with Research Equals, we sort of flip it around. You publish continuously and smaller units. And then also that's, uh, that's for free. But if you want to close down your work, you have to pay because we really come from this open access and open science value. So, you know, people might come to Research Equals and say, we want to publish closed, not with a paywall, but with restrictive licenses. And we say, you know, okay, fine, but then you have to finance the platform. And another way of sort of showcasing what Research Equals is really about, it's about bringing sort of a balance uh, between various parties in, uh, in the research space, which now isn't the case. And this is a nice sketch uh, that Basapta Erwin made and shared on Twitter, which I thought would be fun to share with you here today. But that's about the idea behind research equals, and you know why not immediately dig in and see see how it works. So I'm going to stop sharing this presentation and switch over to switch over to my browser over here. There we go. I hope you don't see any anything shameful. Um, so if you go to researchequals.com, uh, this is where you'll land. And uh, it's, it's really, um, we try to make it as straightforward as possible. And there are various entry points of how you can start uh, consuming the platform. Of course, you, if, if you didn't hear me talk uh, and you just landed on this page, you might scroll through it. And it really resembles this, this path that I just, just talked about, right? We have these different pieces and every piece of information is linked. So it sort of guides us and we can document this, this journey of, well, what is research equals here? Um, so we see, okay, publish each, each step uh, because we produce outputs in the research. So why not publish those? And each of the steps uh, gets a DOI. So you can publish data, you can publish videos, you can publish text, but also code and a lot of other things that you can imagine. Uh, we try to, in that sense, be as open as possible that all open file formats you can publish on Research Equal. So if you have a closed file format, we don't necessarily allow it, uh, but all open file formats we do. And then, of course, now we stick here. So usually they don't. Um, and also the important thing here is, is that you know, you can publish where the research goes, not the other way around that you have to uh, try and find a way uh, to publish what is publishable. So it really is about the work and then that the open access publishing is zero cost. And what is also important before we dive into these uh, research steps and how you can publish here is that really the core is about the platform is that you as a researcher get to publish on your terms. So, you know, you can choose your language, you can choose when, uh, you can choose what format, and it's really about when you are ready. So it's about giving agency to, to the researcher to publish what they want. So we, we can either sign up or just browse around a bit. I'm going to start with uh, with browsing around a bit. And what we see on the left-hand side of the screen is the most recent uh, published module. So this is, I think we launched 23 days ago um, and we've already published around, uh, I think around 20 modules, uh, which each module is a research step. Um, so we can sort of browse those. And one of the things that we immediately see is um, that some of these are in a different language. So we don't dictate that every publication has to be in English. Uh, so this is my native language, uh, somebody publishing in Dutch, uh, but you, know, you could also publish in Spanish and German, uh, but also a non-colonial language uh, of your choice. So we really give that agency to the researchers also. 
And on the right, we see some of the recent people who signed up. So if you, you know, it's a new platform. So if you want to see whether there are people you, are, you know already on here, you can check that out there. So I'm going to dig into, uh, let's see, I'm going to go into this specific module uh, because I think it's an interesting example. So I'm going to click on this and we get an example of a published module, right? So this is a, uh, this is uh, the author avatar. Uh, this is a single author publication. Uh, it was published on the 1st of February, actually immediately upon launch. And it has a DOI, so we can you know, reference it and we see the license. And this is a specific kind of uh, research step. We allow people to say, well, what kind of step are you taking, right? Because if you publish data or you share an analysis, that's completely different and we need some way to categorize these. And we use uh, Wikidata actually to, to sort of demarcate which, um, which uh, types that people are publishing. And this specifically is a narrative step. Um, so, this is the result of, a, of an entire project and they shared um, a PDF in here. Uh, so you, PDF technically is an open file format I discovered, so we allowed it. Um, but if we go in here, we will download this, uh, this research step and we can actually view it. And we see that this person decided to uh, publish a graphic novel uh, about the research that they did within a citizen science project specifically. So we can also, through this publication platform, we can publish different kinds of work because not all research is uh, a monolith, right? There are lots of different ways of creating, communicating knowledge and producing knowledge and I find this to be a very interesting example because, you know, if they're trying to convey a certain amount of information through a visual means instead of just a text mean. So this, I find a nice example of how it expands the kinds of output you, you can publish. And then, you know, we, we might read something like this and we think, okay, well, you know, this inspires us to, to do more work. And then we can, we can link uh, a step to this. So we can, for example, press this plus button, which would allow us to create a new research step, which immediately links back to this one. And we can you know, keep working on it. So if we press on this right now, of course it doesn't work because we're not signed in. Uh, so I'll also um, quickly go into the create account space. Uh, so if you wanna follow along, please do. Uh, no, no need to do it per se, but please do feel free to do it. Um, so you sign up with your email as usual. You can choose just like on Twitter, you can choose a username, uh, password. Um, and we specifically, just like this group, we value uh, that people respectfully uh, deal with one another. So we not only ask you to agree to terms of use, but also a code of conduct. So I've already signed up, um, would be a bit weird if I hadn't. Uh, so I'm not gonna go through this process per se. Um, and then go back and I'm gonna just quickly log into my account to show my password manager is ready. So when, we, uh, when we've signed up and we log in, uh, we can you know, start adding, uh, adding our own research modules, these research steps. So to do that, uh, we only have to, you know, have something we're working on and say, well, what's the title? I'm just gonna call it the Fairpoints presentation today. You give it a summary and then you get to select which, uh, which type of module you're publishing. So we, we made a pre-selection of quite a, quite a bunch of them. Uh, in this specific scenario, I think I said it's a presentation. Um, so we can also publish our presentations on here if we want, because you know, if we, uh, if we do some research, we might give a pre presentation that might be valuable. But if you see, if you, you're missing something, you can always just send us a quick email and we can add uh, a specific module type. I think earlier this week, somebody emailed us and said, hey, we're doing an ethical review application. Uh, and I don't see this option. So we, 
we within the time span of a few hours, we went from a suggestion uh, to actually implementing it. So we're really about uh, about making it work for you as a researcher instead of just sort of having to go through all these procedures to make something, uh, to get something at it. Then you get to choose your license. Uh, so CC0 and CC BY is free, uh, but you can also choose uh, different options. Uh, so I'm gonna choose CC BY for now. And then uh, you get to choose to customize the color that you will see when you have published your module. So we see a few different colors over here. Uh, this is primarily just for fun to add a few uh, options so you can you know, pick your favorite color. So once we've created this, uh, this draft module, we have a few options. So we can you know, link it back to a different modules to make sure that, uh, that it's clear you know, this is a next step of this off other piece of work. And we can also link it to any, any kind of uh, item that has a DOI already. So we can also say if we previously published uh, a journal article and this work now continues based on that, we can link it to it. Uh, so I'm gonna just quickly find the one we just saw, the story of a civic sentinel. Uh, you know, this isn't necessarily logical because this fair points presentation doesn't follow on it, but just as an example, um, and we can link that. But we can also link multiple previous uh, steps to this new one. So we might actually say, you know, there is another piece of work which is also related to it. So. A specific scenario where this might be relevant is if we have two data sets that we analyze for, for results. So we, we, we would combine those two data sets into one results section. And we can also immediately see uh, those linked steps here. Then we have the option uh, to add authors. So we can only add authors onto uh, our research steps that are also on research equal. So we, at the moment, don't have the option to invite people from outside yet. Uh, so I'm gonna invite my friend Nami real quick, just as an example. Um, so as you see here, you know, it's much easier to invite people uh, to co-author some work with you than you, know, you don't have to add all the information and the institutional address uh, to to Scholar One or your editorial assistant. Uh, so I'm gonna undo this because I didn't actually talk to him about this um, before he gets confused. And we can you know, add a summary still, but the main thing here really is that uh, each research module is sort of a container where you can put files in. And those can be you know, text files if you want, uh, but they can also be data files, they can be, uh, any kind of output you create that isn't an open file format. And we have this really nice, uh, nice uploader. So you can also choose, you know, uh, if you already have it, for example, in your Google Drive, you could go there and you could just immediately add it straight from there. Um, but you can also just, you know, upload it from your device if you want. So we have a bunch of options here. Uh, and if you're, for example, out in uh, doing field work, it might be interesting to say, hey, you know, we want to publish a video uh, of a specific type of uh, observation we made. So then you might actually do this from your phone or your iPad or whatever, and you would straight up record a video and publish it uh, straight from your phone. But you can also, like, of course, it doesn't make sense here to publish this beautiful still image of me um, as my Fairpoints presentation. That doesn't make sense. Uh, so I'm just going to remove it again. Mm. But I will go and find it uh, real quick on my device. The actual presentation. Here we go. Um, so I'm going to add that to my uh, to this module. And then, you know, uh, we, we can always uh, add some structured references also, which will be added to the public metadata uh, for, for reusability um, to, uh, to make sure that people know that this specific uh, DOI is citing other work. But then we can, uh, we can publish it. Uh, so I'm not gonna do that right now because this is not 
uh, actually something I want to publish. Uh, but once you hit this button, it will immediately issue the DOI, the metadata will get be made public, and this, uh, this research information, this research step would be published and available for people to, to see, read, and build on. And you can also add supporting files, of course, uh, but um, that is really the core of what Research Equals does. That's the core of what it brings right now. And the main thing here is that it provides the option for you to publish the works that you're producing. So I've had this before where, you know, I create this beautiful reproducible manuscript with all the data being read in and the analyses in an R markdown file. But then ultimately when I wanted to publish it, they said, you know, you have to send us a you know, Word file or a PDF file, and it wouldn't be able to publish uh, that reproducible document. So in this space, you can publish that as well. Uh, and then subsequently, uh, you know, you, you work and you can publish that work instead of that you work to be able to publish. So, I'm gonna quickly switch back to the presentation because I think that was the core of the demo on my end um, that I had prepared. And then I'm gonna, uh, let me see which screen, this screen, too many screens. Um, and then when you publish one of, these, uh, one of these research modules and you've linked your ORCID to your account, which you can do with a few clicks, then you also get an update in your ORCID that this module is added to your record. Because we use Crossref, you know, once you publish, it is added to that metadata and then Crossref tells ORCID, hey, you know, in this specific situation, Chris published this new piece of work. So please add that to the profile. So we really wanna utilize this, uh, this interoperability between open infrastructures that already exist. And then also you can um, see some of the potential here. I think NAMI is again a good, good example um, that uh, you can publish work that otherwise would go unpublished. So this, uh, th th they published a, a research proposal for a postdoc application that would have otherwise gone in the file drawer somewhere. And of course, they're not necessarily building on that work, but it might be of value to somebody uh, somewhere down the line. And that's, that's really also one of the things that we're trying to do here is that by providing these options for smaller units of uh, publishing to say, you know, hey, sometimes we all have unfinished work. It, it's better to share that, um, those unfinished research lines with the tiny pieces that we have already finished so that other people can see it and, you know, be updated uh, quite quickly on this. Because if somebody follows your account, they will immediately see uh, what you've published and be able to take it up and go with it. And I think then, because Sarah, you said that the, there would be some note taking before the summary slide. So I guess I shouldn't show it now. Um, yeah. yeah, I think there there is a lot of questions and discussions. Yeah. So you can take this whenever you're ready and then we can show the summaries at the end. Okay, then then I'm I'm just gonna pause the share here, and I feel like I went through it maybe a bit fast, so I'm happy to you know go back somewhere uh, if there are specific questions. But the core really being um, here that you know you get to choose uh, what you publish and you publish those steps, and then the next steps um, once you've published it, you know it's findable because we deposit it with Crossref. Uh, it gets added to your ORCID, so in that sense, it's findable. Uh, everything you publish is, uh, is, does not have a paywall. So even if you use a more restrictive license, it will be openly accessible. The only thing is whether you can reuse it. And we default to you know, being as permissive as possible by saying, hey, that's free. The interoperability aspect is something we're still exploring. And that's also where, again, as I mentioned before, we, we're continuously updating things on the system and trying to figure out, hey, what are the needs 
of actual researchers. We're not like a big publisher. We don't have, you know, big, big teams. And, but that also um, means that we, you know, we, we're very agile. We can add things, we can hear your requests and actually work on those uh, rather rapidly and uh, use the input that people give to sort of prioritize. So even this week, somebody said, made, a, made a suggestion to make something a bit more accessible. And within 24 hours, we had that from feedback to implement it. So I really, you know, I'll share a few links later, but I really do want to invite you to, if you, if you try it out, to provide any feedback, also things where you say, hey, this isn't working for me, and from your unique perspective so that we can, you know, improve it, because ultimately that's, uh, that's what we're here for, to make research life easier and uh, not just to have yet another publishing platform. So yeah, I'm gonna shut up for a moment and then also uh, give everybody the opportunity to say what they liked, what they didn't like or ask questions. So as I mentioned, um, yeah, feedback from any uh, of any kind, I would appreciate it. Thank you so much, Chris. Uh, thank you for the wonderful presentation and demo. I am seeing people are on fire writing questions. So I'm gonna stop the recording and to allow people uh, to voice their questions directly and we can take it. Uh, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> so um, 